What's up YouTubers, Salvador Brigman here. And on this YouTube video, we're gonna it's gonna be very relaxed, very casual, and I wanna talk about how you can use email leading up to the launch of your Kickstarter campaign, your Indiegogo campaign, or even just your business in general. And I'm also speaking from experience here, and also of the many interviews that I've done on my podcast, um, what those creators did to build up their email list and how you can do the same. How you can really get the best uh, allotment, the best results for the time that you put in, and just why email is so damn powerful. Like it's really powerful. So the first thing I wanna say, if you do not have an email list, that should be, I would say, the top three of your priorities before you launch a Kickstarter campaign, or now that you've maybe run a successful one, you should really capitalize on that and get the emails of your backers and customers. I personally use MailChimp to manage my email list. I have a list of, one list of 10,000 people, a little bit more than that, uh, another one of around like 8,000. So it's, it's definitely a significant uh, number of subscribers. And there are also lists that have autoresponder sequences. Like if you're joining my Kickstarter course, which is just a free email course that pretty much just like brings you through step-by-step step how to launch a great campaign, which is at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter, um, you'll, you'll see the way that I do my communication. And that's it, that's an automated email sequence. But I also do a weekly emails newsletter where I'll send out and I also do reply to emails um, that I get back from these autoresponders and also the emails that I physically send each week to my subscribers. So I use MailChimp as the tool to manage all of that. MailChimp, at the time I'm <clears throat> recording this, it's free up until 2,000 subscribers. You can also use something like Aweber. I think there are one or two other email uh, softwares out there. If you're really going like high level, you can use Infusionsoft. Uh, I myself, I'm just using MailChimp right now at the time I'm recording this, and I really recommend it to anyone who's just starting out. So there, let's break this down into two phases. First, getting people on the email list, and two, once you have those people, what you're gonna do, how you're gonna communicate, how you're gonna do subject lines, how you're gonna analyze your results, all that kind of stuff. This is definitely gonna be a longer video. Like I'm expecting again, maybe 15 minutes, I'd say, um, to talk about this. So first of all, with the, uh, the in, in terms of getting people on your email list, there is pretty much like two ways to do that. One is just have a subscriber button, a subscriber form. That's something that I did when I just started out, allow people to subscribe for updates to my blog, which is crowdcrux.com. That's a very simple way, and you'll start getting email subscribers. If you have traffic, if you have people that engage, uh, really like your content, or they like what you're doing, they wanna learn more, that's a very simple way to do that. I think a more sophisticated way is creating some kind of a lead magnet. And basically what a lead magnet is, is you're giving away something that has value in order to begin a relationship with a subscriber. So for example, the free Kickstarter course that I mentioned earlier at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter, that is a lead magnet. I've been in this industry since 2012. What's that, four years now, a little over four years. I've gathered up a lot of knowledge about Kickstarter and crowdfunding and marketing and all these different things. I'm giving away this free knowledge also in this YouTube video, and that begins to establish a relationship with my subscribers. And it's really from a no expectation kind of perspective. I don't need people to buy my products, to buy my eBooks, to buy my course. I personally like vouch for my content. I work really hard on my content, on writing, on putting together great informational videos that like go step by step through how to launch a great campaign. I work hard at that and I do uh, expect my students to get results like when they consume the content. <laughs> but like I'm not expecting people who come on my email list to necessarily want those products and that's okay. And that's the perspective that you should have. So a lead magnet is enhancing someone's life in some way. 
could be you're providing tips, could be behind the scenes sneak peeks leading up to the launch of your campaign, could be a, an interview you did with some someone related to the cast of a film that you're trying to um, you know create. You're giving something away to make a subscriber want to give over their email address. I also run kickstarterforum.org that has over 6,000 members. That is also a lead magnet. I specifically created that website. I spent a lot, a lot of hours managing that website, building up the content, making sure people are happy, making sure that people meet each other through the forum in order to have this relationship with these different subscribers. And that's 6,000 people over time. So like you, ha you have to give something in order to suspect people are going to come onto your email list. Okay, so there's organic, people just signing up, there's the lead magnet, and then there is what is the actual technology that you use to get the person on the email list. For me, I use lead pages to put together very simple opt-in forms for people to subscribe. Um, so it could have some information like from Instagram, I have a specific lead page so I can track the number of subscribers I get from my Instagram account and it has a very specific message for them and lead pages has a lot of simple designs and like things that you can implement to make it look nice, you know, to make it look like not just some like really boring like shitty web page. You can also use MailChimp. Um, they have like specific forums. I don't personally like that as much. You can use WordPress, set up a free uh, website, maybe a domain name or a subdomain, or even on your, you know, uh, uh, on your own website. Um, you can use that to create a landing page. You can also use ClickFunnels. Um, there are a lot of tools out there. Rock Launch, that's another tool I've used in the past. My favorite up until this point has been Lead Pages, just because uh, I'm so familiar with it now and it's like very easy to implement. So if you can use, if you're looking for some kind of a landing page, that is one way to give away content and to get subscribers on your email list. You can also just build it into your website, like having a bar or a button of some kind, but you want to draw attention to that. You know, you don't just want, when uh, a friend comes to your website, if they don't notice how to subscribe or they don't notice this thing, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get subscribers. It should actually interrupt them, like interrupt their attention, get their attention, and they can then decide whether or not they want to subscribe. I use another plugin on my website called uh, Optin Monster that creates a very simple pop-up so that people, if they want to learn about Kickstarter, can join my course. So there are lots of ways to get people on your email list using different technological tools out there. Once you have people on your email list, that's going to spend the next eight minutes talking about that. If you are coming from the perspective that you're going to have very boring like business communication with these people, you're gonna fail. I started out that way because like I was taught that. Like I was taught that you're supposed to write in a certain way, that you're supposed to talk in a certain way, some way that's like, I don't know, corporate or like comes across business formal. And I learned over the years that is not what conduces relationship building. That is not what is conducive to making people or getting people to take action. The way that people want to be talked to is very conversational. It's very how you would talk to a friend. Like you don't want to feel like this is some corporate entity or like this is some uh, organization, faceless organization that you're getting messages from. No one want to feel like that. And also in your mind, if you're talking with someone, you know, you're getting messages and you feel like they're a corporation or a brand, Instantly, like instantly, you put them in the spam box in your mind. Like this is marketing. This is marketing. Like it feels like it. And it just feels so not genuine, you know? I don't like it. Um, so if you are going to be, if you're looking for the best way to communicate with your subscribers, you should treat it as though you're sending an email to a friend. And it's hard to get into that mindset 
So actually what I used to do when I first started sending emails, I would actually write my email newsletter in my Gmail inbox as though I was sending it to a friend. And I'm like, it, it just puts you in that mindset. Like, I'm like, hey, like, what's up? Like, it just was much more personal than if I'm writing like, in, I'm writing my newsletter, like <laughs> writing something very formal in MailChimp. It just, it didn't come across the way I wanted it to come across. So if that helps you to get in that mindset, write the actual email in your Gmail and write your friend's name there and pretend you're sending it to them. It's gonna come off much more conversational. It's gonna show your personality more, which is gonna help you build a relationship and it's gonna be better for everyone involved. <laughs> the, the other thing um, that I would recommend, don't have any kind of email template. Like MailChimp gives you all these really cool templates, but it comes off as salesy. Like it comes off as marketing. It comes off as an organization. You don't wanna come off like that. You wanna come off as an individual, as a personality, as an actual human being. Like, believe it or not, I am a human being. Like, I'm a normal person. Well, I don't know, like kinda normal. Like, I'm kind of odd actually, but you want to have a very basic email template, preferably no template at all. Like, you want people to open this and they feel like this is literally just like a normal email. It looks exactly like a normal email that they would get from one of their friends. And arguably, that's how the subject line should be also. People, you want people to feel, to put you in the friend box in their mind. Like this is not a marketer, this is someone doing something cool. This is not a marketer, this is something I'm interested in. Like this is some guy I know, like I know maybe one or two personal facts about him. He's actually a human being, not this like organization who wants something from me or wants my money. You know, you, you, you put them in the friend box um, when the communication is more relaxed and conversational. That's what you want. The other thing that I will say, when you're sending these emails, uh, I would definitely recommend at least once a week, but you should only have one call to action in each email. What is a call to action? Um, a call to action is something that you want someone to do after they consume your message. So for me, my call to action for you guys is if you actually want to learn more and you know take all of this experience that I've accumulated and implement it and have a great campaign, go to crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter and join my email list. And if you're still a little bit skeptical, you can just subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll put out more videos. And once you see that I know what I'm talking about and I'm really passionate about this, um, then I would really recommend getting on that email list because it is curated. Like I put together a course, I, I took out Excel, made sure that these all these different uh, emails cover various topics of launching a campaign, et cetera. So that, that is my call to action for this message. But when you're sending out an email, you only wanna have one call to action for that particular email. Otherwise, there's analysis paralysis. There are so many things to do, people get confused, they do what you don't want them to do. Like, just have one call to action with each email. Have one link have one question, maybe you can, you can definitely repeat that link or repeat that question, but only have one call to action. Um, the, also these call to actions, they could be engagement focused or conversion focused. Conversion focused meaning you're getting them off their uh, email inbox into a, uh, a website or to view an Instagram photo or to subscribe to you on Snapchat, like whatever it is. Um, th that's how I usually break down the actual call to action there. Now, this is a lot of content, I know. I'm gonna go over two more things and, um, and I think that's gonna be really valuable to what I'm about to mention. So listen up if you're like, oh, this is a long video. Actually listen to what I'm about to say here. MailChimp is amazing for two reasons. One, it shows you who opens your emails and who doesn't. It gives you an idea of the responsiveness of your email list, of your subscribers, of which email subject lines gets opened, 
um, of the, the number of clicks in a particular email, the, the number of people that actually go through and take that action, the number of replies. You can manage replies within MailChimp. It just gives you such a great analytical view of how your marketing is going. And it also gives you expectations of, well, like my subscribers seem really engaged. You know, let's just say I have a thousand email subscribers. I'm getting 500 people to open my emails and let's just say 200 people to take consistent action as I'm leading up to this campaign. Okay, when I do launch this, I, I make it live, make it public, 200 people out of the gate are gonna check out my campaign. How great is that? And let's just say, I don't know, half of those, maybe 30% of those actually make a pledge. That's still a good number of people. Like that's, that's respectable. Um, so it, by doing this email uh, newsletter or this, this weekly communication with MailChimp, you're gonna get a good indication of the engagement of your followers and the people that you have uh, subscribed to that email list. And the last thing that I'm gonna say here is everyone wants email to be automated. Everyone wants to feel like they don't have to do work and everyone wants to make it easy. And I'm all for that. Like I'm all for making life easy, you know, automating certain parts of your business. I do that myself. Like I have a virtual assistant, um, all these different things. Christine is one of the writers for my blog, etc. But also people do want personalized attention. And I recognize that. Uh, I do try to reply to emails as often as I can. And if you are leading up to some kind of a launch, look at the people who are not opening your emails and reach out to them directly. Reach out to them one-on-one. -on -one. Look at who's not opening them and try to actually build that relationship because when you are doing a product launch, it matters. Like, Every person matters. Even just spending five seconds to email someone, spending an hour to email everyone who didn't open your previous or like the last three emails that you sent, that could make the difference between a new customer and not. And that new customer could result in a referral. That new customer could decide to pledge at one of the upper tiers of your Kickstarter campaign. There's a lot of potential. So don't be willing to do, be willing to do some work leading up to the launch of your campaign, specifically with regards to email. I actually have a lot more, a lot more thoughts on this that I could, I could share, but I'm just going to leave it as it is for you guys. If you have any specific questions, please, please leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you think I did a good job, if you liked this video and it was helpful, give me a thumbs up and come subscribe. And if you really do want more of an in-depth breakdown and you want me to bring you through this entire course, it's really personalized. It's very, it covers every single topic that I've identified uh, in the last four years, helping people launch campaigns, interviewing creators, etc. Um, go to crowdcrux.com slash kickstarter and join my free email course there. I hope this YouTube video was helpful and I wish you a lot of luck and prosperity as you launch your new product, your new campaign, or your new company.